Hobbs Parker are back with their first classic car auction of 2024 on the 17th and the 18th of April. The viewing starts on the 15th and Phil, this could be one of their most eclectic sales yet. But first, our friends at Lancaster Insurance are running monthly giveaways. You can win all sorts, from experience days to tools, restaurant vouchers and tech. So check the video description for full details and to enter. As ever, there's always a wide choice here for all tastes and all budgets, I've noticed. Absolutely love it. I mean, we're starting with a car that both of us can agree on. BMW E34 525i. Yes, yeah, so the right engine. It's the right spec, it's got a leather interior. This is a fairly late E34 because they went to E39s about a year after. You can tell that for the slightly wider kidney grille. You've done your research. Um, but I, I love the, uh, the, the wheels. It's got some good continental rubber on the back there. The history with this car is quite good. It's been family owned for 12 years. Yes. And all the paperwork and history with it dates back to 2000. That's only just after I was born. Yeah, that's, that makes you feel old, doesn't it? Yeah, that's that's. But yeah, yeah to worry. well done to this. It's an SE, so it's quite a good spec. I think these are the best wheels for an E34. And 170 for the... odd thousand miles, but it wears it well. Oh so. god, yeah, these are good for the mileage. No, I think this is a fantastic car for the money. But a rarer German beast is here. Oh, I'm all. I'm feeling like Gene Hunt just looking at this. It's a tremendous. facelifted B2 coupe, but a Quattro model. Oh yes. We are back to the 80s and I love this because you don't see too many Project Quattros. Let's be clear, this one isn't immaculate. It's got some scruffy interior bits. The bodywork's not great. You know, it's going to want some love, but you don't tend to see many at an affordable price. Well, Generally, they're, they're really expensive, pristine ones. Apparently, they made about 170,000 B2 coupes, but there's only 8,000 Quattros. Yeah, so it's so a rare So these car. are super rare. And again, as in project form like this, the potential is abundant, but it's yeah. affordable. I think you could get into this for the sort of money where a lot of us want a Quattro but can't afford one. Well, the rarity alone makes it worth it, and it'd be Absolutely. worth bringing this back to its full glory, I would say. So um... Absolutely. But if you're not into German cars, how about this? 1984 Batoni X19. A compact Italian pocket rocket for you. Oh, yes, just I love Just your this. bag, I reckon. I've just finished driving this for an upcoming road test video, and let me tell you, it was in the rain, I was on an industrial estate in Ashford, and I still loved it. It was Bullshit. brilliant. This is a 1500cc car because it's a Batoni. It had the brakes rebuilt just a couple of years ago, so it stops really well, actually. And here's a big shocker for you. See the Targa roof? Mm -hmm. Doesn't leak. A oh, Targa good. roof that doesn't leak. That is fantastic. It runs really well. The fuel system's been rebuilt in it as well. The bodywork is really straight. And unusually for an X19, there's no rot that I can see. It must be some underneath. The interior is clean as well. Interior is really good. Do you know what? I think this is a really nice example. And for the money it's guided at, quite attractively priced. Now, listen, on Classics World YouTube, we put a poll out to say to people, what should our next project car be? And the BMW M5, I think, led the vote. You did. However, very, a very close second was one of these. And this, if I'm honest, this is the one I was hoping for. 911 996 generation. This one's and what a lot number is it, Joe? What's that, sorry? What lot number? Oh, 996. Yes. Lot 996, they know what they're doing here. You see what they did. This is a pre facelift car with the uh, runny egg headlights, but it has got the clear indicator lenses. And I think this is a lot nicer than people give it credit for. Original bill of sale comes with this car. Which I think they, some, the original owner paid just under 80,000 pounds for this car. It could be yours for around a tenth of that. It's guided at nine to 10,000 pounds. It's a Carrera 2 Cabriolet, so it's a nice spec. It's a proper manual gearbox, no Tiptronic nonsense here. It's got hard top roof. They all actually came with that, incidentally. It's got good tyres on it that match on all four corners. The wheels are lovely. I think this is tremendous. This, this could be the value buy of the sale, I reckon. Absolutely. I mean, when you think there are some paint options on a new 911 that cost the same as this car could. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. Something a bit more traditional for you here. Oh. Love it. Now you love an XJS Coupe. I know you're not some fan of the Cabriolets, but you I know. can still I can still give him the time of day when he's any XJS. This is a V12, which is unusual. Exactly that. Say. Exactly that. So it's a V12 Auto. What I like about this is how straight the condition of it is. It's actually a really nice, honest example here. Yep. Um, and Interior is clean. Roofs really good. All seals up nicely. There's a little bit of saggy headliner in the back there, but you know what? It's a 40-year-old Jag. Of course, there's a bit of a saggy headliner. Yeah. Other than that, though. I can't see any obvious rot on it. It runs really smoothly, which is nice for these V12. Well, of course, the Cabriolets are super rare anyway. They didn't make too many of them. And, uh, you know, certainly in V12 spec. But of course, because it's an XJS, there's still loads of club and parts support for it. So, um, and actually, we did a Market Trends in Classic Car Buyer quite recently about this. The Cs are comparatively undervalued next to the full yep. convertibles. So if you fancy an XJS with no roof, this is your hot ticket. Yep, absolutely. No, very much so. Now, speaking of hot ticket, what about this, an 80s Volkswagen that won't cost you a million pounds? Mark II Scirocco. I know, this is only a 1.6, but you know, Mark II Golf prices are going crazy. Sky high. 
So if you want a Mark II Golf that's not quite a Mark II Golf, get yourself a Mark II Scirocco. And we had this discussion amongst ourselves a few days ago that the Mark II Scirocco's looks are a bit divisive, but actually when it's quite base spec like this, you've got black plastic bumpers, you've got bare steel wheels. There's a really honest charm to it. I really like it. I think the proportions of it are really nice. I know it's not arguably as pretty as the Mark I, and incidentally, they did sell at almost twice the number of Mark I's to Mark II's, but again, you just don't see this around anymore. No. So. And here's a little bit of trivia for you. Same door handles as a Porsche 944. So there we go, that ups the value there, already. There's the lineage already. So um, yeah, no, I, I like this. So they, you just don't see them in this sort of original condition. No, um, So, so well this. worth it. But, Talking um, of charming originality, Riley Elf. A Riley Elf. Not a mini, ladies and gentlemen. This is tremendous, isn't it? Yeah, I, well, I love it. I mean, always been a big fan of a mini, but then if you don't want a mini like everyone else, Get the booted version. This is a mini with a bit more boot space and a free cushion as well, I've just noticed. I love the dark red paint with the dark red interior. Really nice colour combination. Old English white roof, the only colour it should be. Registered in July 1967. In August 1967, they went to F Reg. So that's one of the very last E Reg. Oh, there you go. So there's a bit of go. trivia for you. And a little, another little bit of a trivia because I have spoken to our resident mini expert, Mr. Ruggles. Absolutely. Uh, who ha has confirmed that I think the overriders are missing from the front here because uh, yes. they would have had front overrides. It's got well, rear overrides anyway. I quite anyway. like that. It's a simple look to it. It's got the wheel trims there. Now, James from Hobbs Parker, who actually runs the classic side here, he picked this up from the vendor and he said it is, was a lovely car to drive. It felt stable, it felt strong. I took it for a quick riz around the yard because I couldn't resist, frankly. And it was hilarious fun. It, it is a real sweetie, this. 68,000 miles indicated. We don't know if that's genuine or not, but I've got no reason to doubt that. I think this is lovely. And again, different to a Mini. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not concourse, but this is a classic you could jump in and enjoy now and just gently titivate it as you as you Absolutely, always and of do, course, yeah. the vast majority of mini bits will fit it as well, yeah. so it's a really nice classic No, lovely, lovely one. Talking of charming classics to own though, this has got to be another highlight. Part of a four dealer heritage collection, right? So It's a Mark I Fiesta in the basest of the basest of the base. You've got no passenger door mirror, you've got no headrest because you didn't work hard enough at school, you don't even get floor mats, Phil. Look how basic it 950 is. 950cc, popular. I love it. It's tremendous, I love it. isn't it? Yeah, it's, we, just, uh, it's just cracking. We do, we do happen to like a Mark 1 Fiesta at Classic as well. One, one member of the team in particular, you'll see that soon. But this is honest, straight, original and beautiful, isn't it? I love its Spartan interior. I mean, it's got the vinyl seats. There's not even a clock. There's, there's barely any vents. There's like there's some dash vents for the windscreen and uh, wipe clean flooring. What makes me laugh is that in period, you wanted the highest up spec you could get, that was the aspirational one. You almost didn't want to be seen in a base car like this, you'd stretch yourself. These days, it's the base ones like this that turn heads. It's got like 32,000 miles on the clock, I think. It's just it's incredible, stunning. Again, you just don't see Mark 1s like this, and certainly not poverty spec ones. I sincerely hope it goes to someone who keeps it like this and doesn't try to resto mod it or anything like that. I want them to keep it exactly like this, Either that or a Honda K20 in the front. Do not put a ZTEC engine in there. <laughs> that is against the law. All right, well, if we're going to move on from this, there are some beauties in the yard over there. Let's so go. Let's go and have a look. Okay, so it's not quite a poverty spec Ford, but it's not far off. A 1985 Mark III Granada, two litre GLI. So the GLI was the base spec Mark III Granada when it came out in 1985. Oh. So I really, this needs properly recommissioned, but that interior, is to die for. Isn't it fantastic? There's no none of the pillowy leather here, none of your extra pumped up stereo. This is just the minimal Granada you could have. Yes, this is, it's got the, the cloth trim, it's got the four speed auto, it's got an analog clock, not a rev counter. It technically none of the, has a radio. None of those niceties. It's got a radio cassette player. Yeah. Um, good Lord. You I know, mean, this is, this is if you were determined to be better than the one in the Cortina, but you could only just afford it. You, you've just had to pay an extra 10 quid a month to get this yeah. over the Sierra. There are, there are some cosmetic challenges on this one, and I can tell you the bonnet release has actually fallen out, so you may want to look into that before you try and drive it. But again, it, but... So, so rare in this age on a sea reg, a lot of them would have been on D-plate anyway, so. And if you choose cruelty-free cosmetics, as the previous owner said, you might be able to titivate it nicely, bit of polish. Yep. It, well, it does need a makeover. It but, does need know, some cosmetic it, work. It would be up. well worth it, I'm what telling you. That is super But if you rare. want to talk about projects, I mean, I'm not a Land Rover fan, as you well know, but even I will give this the time of day. Do you know why? It's a Series 1 Land Rover, and you can see it's a bit careworn. The year is 1948. 1948, same year as... This is one of the very earliest. Same year as Shaken Stevens. I mean, it's practically, you know, well, a legend. It's vintage in its own right. <laughs> but 
This is one of the very earliest Series 1 Land Rovers. Let's make no mistake, it doesn't run. The paint is shot, the interior is in bits. It is a hefty project, but I think this is well worth doing. Well, as a collector's piece, like you say, first year of production, yeah, it's just, uh, it's great. It's where it all started, where the Land Rover legend started. Absolutely, I mean, this is more of a Land Rover ago. than that Defender nonsense they're doing these days. Yes, this is the sort of SUV you can get on board with. Yeah, exactly, there you go. So there we go. <laughs> this is the only SUV I'll endorse. Listen, we saw the Audi B2 Coupe. Here's its replacement. Oh, yes. Now, it's the Audi 80 Coupe. Again, this is very much a project in waiting, but uh, it's, I think it's lovely. I think... Very rare. Again, super rare. It's, it's an auto, which might not be to everyone's taste, but I love an auto. Quite happily sort of swish around with this. I, I challenge someone to take this on and uh, bring it back to full health. Is that's what, what I'd really I like. I would wager this would be the more head-turning project. It's another Mark III Granada. Look at those ruched leather pillowy armchairs. Look this. at the armrest. Look at the uprated stereo. Look at all the extra speakers and faux wood that you get in there. It's quite a high mileage. It's done 179,000 miles, this car. Best, uh, best seats in the business. Absolutely. Facelifted Mark III, hence the slightly different grille treatment at the front here. Uh, do you know what? I love Granadas. I really, really like them. And this one is a well worthwhile project. And I happen to know it resides from Bexhill, which is my hometown. There we go. So, yes, it's, uh, it's, it's yours for the taking, Joe. Absolutely. No, I've got another white saloon. It's fine. That's but true. you know what? Here's another standout car. 2010 MGTF. But if you draw your attention to the wheels, you look at the front bumpers, which are a little bit different. This one isn't an English built car. This is a Syac car. This is one of the later Chinese tier. Yes, yeah, so I don't know whether at this point they were knocked down kits reassembled at Longbridge. I believe they were, correct us if we're wrong but, in the comments. Um, but, but yes, this is basically a Chinese era MG TF. Much maligned cars, you know. But actually, uh, as we've said before with the TF, really, really good car. The quality is up there with the British built cars. They don't seem to suffer with the head gasket issues, really, because by now they've got it sorted out pretty much. Well, I think the 2010 cars are substantially different to the very early ones. Exactly. This, this would make a great buy. Inside, British lovely leather interior is immaculate. Car. It's got loads of original paperwork. This one was sold by Trophy Cars, who, if you don't know, specialise pretty much only in MGFs and TFs. You'll see them if you've very driven up the A1. Very prominent site up on the A1. Yes, Indeed, we spot yes. them. Yes, that's right. But yeah. I think this is a really, really nice car. It's collectible. It gives you a bit of a retro classic feel because it is ultimately a 90s car but it's more modern than that, and it's got working aircon, it's got a good stereo, it doesn't have any rust or a blown head gasket. I think if you fancy a classic MG experience on a budget, maybe something that is collectible. But listen, if you want a British built, a properly full blown British built, mm. coil sprung MG TF, we can go inside where there is an example of such. So let's, let's do go. that. So here we are, Joe, 2003 MG TF. So this is very much a British built one. It's got 43,000 miles on the clock, ton of paperwork. Two owners from new this car, and it's been wax or rust proof underneath and always garaged. So you know that unusually for an MG, there yep. is no rot on this car anywhere. Yeah, the interior is as straight as a die. It's absolutely lovely. It looks fantastic, half leather seats. Yeah, TF, as we said before, massively, massively underrated car. No, I think this is a proper bargain. Lovely with a drop top motoring. The guide, 1,500 to two and a half grand. Yes, yeah, I mean, what a bargain. A great way of getting into the British open top motoring. But if you want something a little bit more Traditional. Albeit still open top. There we are, it is indeed. 1944 Willis G. Yes. American icon, this. Yes, absolutely, yes. So this wasn't registered in the UK until quite some time later, I think uh, 1981. Mm. But um, yeah, fantastic example. It's had a bit of resto work done, but there's still lots of lovely original bits. The soft top's still original, all the tools that will come with it are actually original in period. And I think it's been just restored enough and been left to weather and age a little bit, yes. that it looks correct. It's got this lovely patina to it, hasn't it? It really is. So if you want a bit of a World War II relic, they made nearly 700,000 of these mm. uh, just during the war alone. So um, incredible. Incredible sort of icon, really, I think. Very rare, um, very rare car to see these days, but this one, I think, is the perfect condition. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, we had an MG TF. Look at this, a lovely Mark II MG Midget. Absolutely lovely car, Re this. Really loved it. It's got the 1098 uh, A-Series engine. A little bit more power there, yep. Being the Mark II, it's got the uh, reprofiled windscreen and windy-up windows. So it's got the uh, luggage rack and the picnic basket on the back there. Lovely touch. I think it's a really nice colour combination as well. It's a sort of British racing green, not black interior. That looks like a sort of very dark brown. I really, really like that. The bullet style mirrors. I love an MG midget. We've said it so many times before. And again, they still represent such great value. I, I mean, I don't know why they're not more expensive. No. I really don't. I mean, these are brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So a guy price of what, six to eight on this one. Yeah. But being a, a, you know, a Mark II example, it's got all the, the chrome trim, proper traditional really, British really classic. But, um, and all the scope to do whatever you want. There's so much support for these cars. You can modify it, you can put 12.75 in it, you can tune it. 
or you can just stay standing and enjoy it, and why not? No, this is absolutely tremendous. Brings a real smile to my face. Definitely ended our little walk around on a, something of a high here. One sure. of the lowest cars is one of the highest points. Absolutely, and very much so. I think it's indicative of the quality of cars they got in this sale. Hobbs Park always bring variety, but this one, eclectic as anything, it's fantastic. They've got supercars, sports cars, off-roaders, exotics. Absolutely. British favourites. Something for everyone. So don't forget, you can bid from Wednesday the 17th of April, 12 noon, to 12 noon, Thursday the 18th of April, and you can come down to the Ashford premises in person from Monday the 15th to view the lots. There's loads more in the sale. Some of them weren't here by the, on the day of filming, but uh, yeah, check out the website and see all the lots in their catalogue. It's, uh, it's quite a selection. So yeah, um, Absolutely incredible. If you are going to bid on any of the cars in this sale, let us know in the comments what you're bidding on, and a very good luck to you. But for now, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to give us a good old thumbs up, like, subscribe, all that malarkey. We'll see you again soon. See you then.